well as we launch into this superhero series. I have a few superhero jokes for you, okay? Why couldn't Batman go fishing? Because Robin ate all the worms. Oh, I know. Where is Spider-Man's homepage? On the World Wide Web. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What superhero uses public transportation? Bus Lightyear. That's a groaner. Why did Wonder Woman dance to the vegetable band? Because it had a good beat. B-E-E-T. Okay, that's all I got. That's as good as it gets. And who doesn't love a good superhero joke or an exciting superhero movie? Lots of action, the struggle between good and evil, and in the end, with their superhuman abilities, the superhero always wins the day. But superheroes don't always present as amazingly strong, brave, and gifted, do they? A consistent theme in superhero movies is that day-to-day Superheroes are pretty average, ordinary. They live regular lives. They just sort of blend in. Clark Kent goes to work every day as a journalist. Diana Prince worked as a secretary. Bob and Helen Parr live in the suburbs raising their kids. And so in the movies, most people don't even realize who these superheroes are when they see them day to day. Only when they don their superhero costumes and save the day with their superpowers do we recognize them as Superman, as Wonder Woman, as the Incredibles, right? Now, making that jump from ordinary to extraordinary happens in a flash in the movies, but to most of us, that sort of transformation seems rather impossible. We don't, to my knowledge, have the ability to leap tall buildings in a single bound, transform into an Amazonian goddess in a flash, or corral our kids to all smile at the same time in the family photo, much less get them to go out together and save the world, right? But not all superpowers are so obvious, and not all superheroes wear flashy costumes. The Bible actually gives us endless stories of people who lived ordinary, unassuming lives until God called and equipped them to do extraordinary things. Take Noah, for example. We read part of that story just a moment ago. Noah was as ordinary as anyone in his day. And how do we know that? Because the entirety of his introduction and bio in Scripture is just those two sentences I read. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. That's it. Sounds like a a good guy, a, a nice guy. Apparently, he had a family. Probably did all the regular things that people of his day did. Farmed a little, knew how to build a few things, kept some livestock. The same could probably be said for most of us. Good person, good people, has a family, does the things that most people do day to day, goes to work, does the shopping, fixes a meal, all pretty ordinary stuff. Most of us go through life, in fact, thinking we're pretty ordinary, that even on our best days, we're rather average. Maybe we have an occasional slightly above average day, but mostly we're just pretty ordinary. But here's the thing. Ordinary are precisely the people God uses to do extraordinary things in the world. When God wanted to do a new thing with all of creation, who did God tap? Noah, regular ordinary Noah. God tapped Noah on the shoulder and said, hey Noah, I've got a job for you and here's what I want you to do. I want you to build an ark, collect your family and some of the animals, load the ark and stay there till I tell you to come out. And then from you and your family, I'll repopulate the earth and through you I'll save and restore humanity. What would your response have been to God if he came to you with that proposal? Hmm? Hey Andy, go out back and build me a boat. Really big boat, will ya? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome. 
Andy is so faithful. God says, yeah, go out, build the boat. I know you live in Indiana, no ocean around, but trust me on this. It's what I want you to do. Gather all the animals. And I know some of them are annoying and they bite. And yeah, a couple of them are poisonous, but trust me on this. This is what I need you to do. And yes, I'm going to change everything about earth and humanity and all of creation, but I'm going to save you and your family. Trust me, it's all going to be fine. It's going to be fine. How many of us are in for that? I'm going to confess, I don't know if it could have been said of me as it was said of Noah repeatedly throughout this story. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. If we read to the end of the story... Noah earns the title of superhero of the faith because, in fact, Noah does do everything God commanded him. Humanity was saved. All of creation was restored because of Noah's... Noah's what? All superheroes have superpowers. Noah's faith, possibility. What do you think Noah's superpower was? I invite you to consider the story of another person. A man was walking along a narrow path, not paying much attention to where he was going. Suddenly, he slipped over the edge of the cliff, and as he fell, he grabbed onto a branch uh, growing out from the side of the cliff. And realizing he couldn't just hold on and hang there forever, he called for help. Is anybody up there? Yes, I'm here, said a voice. Who's that, he asked. Well, it's me, God. And the man said, oh, yay, Lord, help me. And God says, well, do you trust me? And the man says, I trust you completely, Lord. And God says, good, let go of the branch. What? I said, let go of the branch. Is anybody else up there? (laughs) Right? Two stories about trust. What did Noah do that this person didn't do? They both trusted, um, but not just in word. The man hanging from the branch said he trusted God. He didn't act on that trust. It's easy to say we trust God, but it's our actions that actually demonstrate that trust. And Noah did many things that demonstrated that he trusted God. He lived in a desert when God told him to build a boat. It doesn't rain in the desert. There aren't rivers and oceans in the desert. But Noah built a boat because God said to. And that that was completely illogical, but an act of trust. And he didn't build just any boat, a boat purported to be longer than a football field, maybe as large as this whole building. A task surely more than one person could complete. And and a subtle detail of the story, God didn't have Noah put a steering wheel or a rudder or any steering device in that boat. So even once it was built and loaded, Noah was going to trust God to take them wherever God wanted them to go. Everything about what God was asking Noah to do seemed outside of reason, outside of Noah's ability, and even outside of sanity. But Noah did it anyways. Noah trusted that God would not do him wrong. Noah trusted God to deliver a good outcome, even when Noah couldn't imagine that for himself. That's just like Michael, who you'll meet in this video in a second. Michael sensed a call from God, a call that he didn't understand, didn't think he was qualified for, didn't think he had any business pursuing. But he trusted God, and he did what God asked him to do, and in the end made a real difference in some lives. I invite you to take a look. About five years ago, there were a few trips going to China. So I went to, uh, went to China on my first trip and got off the plane, and I felt like I was home. The people were amazing. Went back four more times with a bunch of different teams. Uh, there was a draw. Um, to this part of the world. I was reading the newspaper online every day, and I'm reading Chinese news and Hong Kong news, and every newspaper had an article about what's going on over here, um, business-wise and and world development-wise, and I just thought, you know what? I want to be a part of that, and I don't know what that means, but I just want to be there. 
I found my way to Hong Kong on uh, one of the great many monster.com websites. And all these different jobs uh, that I was obviously unqualified for popped up. And there was one teaching position right in the middle of the list. And uh, so I sent in my resume. And the thing that excited me most about this position was that there's an opportunity to create our own curriculum. Teaching English for me, uh, there's a few rewards in knowing that I'm giving them a tool that they're gonna use someday. And so I get to go do this with some little kid whose life can be so impactful later on. The, vi the video goes on, it's a little bit lengthy, goes on to show some of Michael's very everyday tasks and where he lives. And it's all very ordinary and routine, but his life becomes something uh, not ordinary and routine. His life becomes something that's gonna impact those children's lives for the rest of their lives. And he concludes his story with these comments. I'm just a guy who's fumbling through life, trying to follow Christ. Some days having a good job at it, other days, not so much. And I'm just, I'm just doing it here. Michael, just an ordinary guy, trusting God, acting on that trust, and then letting God do extraordinary things with and through him. He was just a regular guy that made himself available to Jesus, and together they changed lives. So maybe we could say Noah's and Michael's superpower was trust. What's your superpower? What's your superpower? Certainly growing in trust of God is going to allow God to do more with and through us, but there's also something else in each of you. God has given every person here some ability or gift or talent, a superpower of some kind that God intends to activate in you for good and for God. You may think you're ordinary, and maybe, maybe we're all ordinary in some way. We probably are. But God has extraordinary plans for each person here. Maybe God wants you to build a boat. Andy's willing. I'd be listening for that. Maybe God wants you to teach English in Hong Kong. Maybe God wants you to be kind to that person at work that everybody loves to hate. Or, or maybe God wants you to be a host family for Trinity Haven like we've been learning about in recent weeks. Maybe God wants you to lead a small group or a Bible study in your neighborhood so others can come to learn about Jesus. Maybe God wants you to help with some task or ministry here at Union Chapel Indy. Or, or, or the list is endless of those things that God could call you to do. And I don't know what it is for you, but I know that there is something. There are so many ways God wants to bless the world through the superpowers God has given each of you. There is a superhero just waiting to bust out of you and put those superpowers to work, put them into action for God. Mercy Me has a song out right now that encourages us in letting our superhero come out. I was listening to it on the drive-in this morning. It's titled, Say I Won't, and a few of the lyrics. Today it all begins. I'm seeing my life for the very first time through a different lens. Yesterday I didn't understand. I was driving 35 with a rocket inside. I didn't know what I had. While I've been waiting to live, my life's been waiting on me. Oh, I'm going to run. No, I'm going to fly. Just say I won't. That I'm not enough. That's what I've been told. But it must be a lie because the spirit inside me says I'm so much more. So let them say what they want. Oh, dare them to try. I can imagine Noah saying those words. Let them all say what they want. I dare them because I'm going to run. No, I'm going to fly. I'm going to trust God and let God's spirit do something amazing through me. I'm sure people called Noah all sorts of crazy. No doubt they said the same thing to Michael when he said he was leaving home and family to go to Hong Kong to live and teach. But Noah and Michael did what they did anyway, because they trusted God would not lead them wrong. What is God asking you to do? Is it illogical, unreasonable, too hard, outside your comfort zone? Is it something that might make you look silly, 
might draw some ridicule, might cost you something. Here's my word to you. Do it anyways. Do it anyways. Whatever it is that God has called you to do, like Nike, just do it. Now, it will take a healthy dose of trust to do what God has called you to do. And realize this. God doesn't generally give all the details and reveal the outcome when God calls. It's more like, hey, Noah, build a boat. I'll get back to you later on the details. Right? Hey, Michael, go to Hong Kong. It'll be fine. We'll work it out. Hey, Merle, why don't you go teach a year of sign language at the School for the Deaf? We'll work out the rest later. Right? And how many years were you teaching and changing lives there at the School for the Deaf? 34 years later. How many kids, how many students do you suppose you had, Merle? Have you ever thought? During the entire time. Yeah. There were hundreds of Thou I bet thousands. Thousands. God said, go for a year, let's see what happens. Thousands of kids learned sign language from Merle because he did that. Pat, start a business or one or two or three. We'll work out the details later, right? Just go do what I tell you to do. Megan, go to Haiti. It'll all work out. It'll be fine. And now your life in the world there's changed. God says, don't worry about what you can and can't do, what makes sense and what doesn't. Don't even worry about the outcome. Just do what I ask you to do. Start where I ask you to start, and we'll do some extraordinary things together. It's like the Toyota commercials that are running recently. We've especially been seeing them uh, during the Olympic trials. They're telling some great stories in those commercials. I invite you to take a look at one of my favorites. Mikey Peterson drops in with a clean car off the top. You could be me. Me? Actually, you could be better than me. You could empower more girls than me. It's called more victories than me. You could be the man I was doing I could be. Uh -huh. Uh-oh, it's game time. I get it. You're scared. I'm gonna make Just it. Just wait. 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 I'm scared too. We'll never get anywhere unless you take that first step. This was mine. Then you take another, and the next thing you know, this is you. And you're conducting an orchestra in Sydney. And he's in London. Look, if I can make it here, and I came from here. Just imagine how far you can go. Because you don't need to be amazing to start, but you need to start to be amazing. Toyota, start your impossible. You don't need to be amazing to start, but you need to start to be amazing. Toyota's tagline for all these commercials, start your impossible. I encourage you, start your impossible. Because scripture says that really nothing is impossible with God. So what will you start with God? This week, maybe even today, what is the first step God is asking you to take as God's superhero right now, right here? God has called you, ordinary, regular you, to do extraordinary things. And God has given you superpowers to accomplish those things, to be God's person in the world. Be like Noah, walk closely with God, listen for God's voice, and trust God enough to take the first step. You don't have to be amazing to take that first step, but you do have to take that first step to let God do amazing things through you. Let's pray about that. Holy God of power and might, of vision and hope, we thank you for your presence and provision day to day, moment to moment, guarding and guiding us. And most of the time, God, we're grateful for the ordinary lives you bless us with. Really, God, it's a privilege to be able to go through most of our days without worry, at a, at a comfortable pace with peace and ease. But God, might we be bold and brave enough to pray that you would make us a bit uneasy with our comfort, a bit bored with ordinary, so that when you call us to break out our superpowers, we will be ready. 
that we'll want to start that project, go to that place, be that person that we thought was impossible, but that with you, we trust can and will happen. Help us to trust you enough to take the first step of that to which you call us, to go where you lead regardless of the cost, and to let go and fly when we find it a bit scary to do so. Inspire us by the stories of the superheroes we find in the Bible and in the world. Inspire us to find our own superhero within so that the world can see more of you in us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you.